Hi, welcome to week 12. This week you're going to be working on your counter argument and refutation along with logical fallacies. So you're, you have a reading from Harvard about counter arguments. It's a really good reading. So it says the counter argument has two stages. You turn against your argument to challenge and then you turn back to reaffirm it. The turn back. So it tells you how to put a counter argument, where to put it, how to write it, how to revise it. This is a really good little handout. And then the other thing that you're looking at is logical fallacies. Before I go any further, I want to just welcome you to week 12 again, remind you that we only have 15 weeks in this class. So there's only three weeks left. If you are behind, you need to catch up. If you are really behind, you need to drop. This is the last week you can drop because you don't want to, it's better to drop than to get an F. So anyway, let's go back to our assignments for the week. So you have a logical quiz fallacy and then it's like, well, why are, what do we, all this logical fallacy stuff? Let's take a look. So here's your assignments. You have to write a counter argument. You need to decide where to put it. Do you put it after the summary or do you put it before the conclusion? It's up to you. So logical fallacies, this essay also asks you to address logical fallacy in your counter argument source or sources, if you have more than one. You, most of you just have one. In the case of the classical argument, finding fallacies in the opposing viewpoints is most effective because it gives you ethos. However, just poking holes in is not enough. You must address why your argument is stronger than a counter argument. So you have two paragraphs to write this week. Paragraph one is on the counter argument. You're just going to write a paragraph, six to seven sentence, summarizing. This is like a summary, just summarizing it, no opinion, the counter argument to your position, including background information. So you could use this, the one source. You have that source. You did a rhetorical critique of the source that contained your counter argument. So you should know this, this source fairly well. And then you're going to turn around in paragraph two, immediately following this counter argument paragraph, you're going to write a refutation with the logical fallacy, pointing out what the logical fallacy is. So immediately following your counter argument, write a longer paragraph that addresses why your paragraph is stronger than the counter argument. In addition, address which logical fallacy you have discovered at work in the source that lays out the counter argument to your position. You need to paraphrase or quote the fallacious statement, address which fallacy the author is committing, and explain how and why it's a fallacy. This will strengthen your ethos. If you don't do that, you're going to lose a lot of points because that's one of the requirements. So let's go back up here to fallacies. So the logical fallacy handout is right here that it explains what a logical fallacy is and explains what some of them are. So you have this particular post hoc propter hoc, explains what it is, gives you an example. Hasty generalization explains what it is, gives you an example. False analogy explains what it is, gives you an example. So you can see that's what's happening in this handout. It goes on for four pages. Keep this handout with you as you take the quiz, okay? So you're gonna take that quiz up here, the logical fallacy quiz, Here's your sample paper, um, classical argument and explains how to write this, how to write the whole essay and what's needed and your discussion of your favorite fallacy. Okay, so your discussion post this week is about your favorite fallacy. Some people have favorite fallacies. What is your favorite fallacy? There are so many fallacies in the logic in logical thought and the book and handouts only go over some of the more popular. What is your favorite fallacy and why? So post an example. Where you're going to see them a lot is in television commercials. DirecTV has a whole series of commercials that are slippery slope. Uh, if you you know, fall into, if you, and you end up falling in a ditch and you fall down the hill and you end up on a bus and all this kind of crazy stuff. Peer responders, have you ever committed a fallacy listed by your classmates? And advertisers often use fallacies to sell products, which television commercials engage in your favorite. So it's just, you know, look at what they, just to share what you have found out. Here's the handout on the they say, I say templates that, um, 
I sent you a little while back. They're really important for capturing ideas and thoughts and to help you begin writing. Some people just get stuck. and was like, I don't know what to say. They have all kinds of different templates in here. So this is just for introducing a view. Here's one just to write a summary. You're going to write a summary of, of your counter argument. You can use this. So-and-so agreed that or such and such argues or complains. So it's just a way to kind of get started. Introducing quotes. There's another one explaining quotes. So this is good for analysis making they say into something you say, this is again, another good analysis template, something implied or assume another good analysis template. And remember every piece of evidence you put in your paper, you need to analyze. So an ongoing debate, here's the ones you might use for counter arguments, disagreeing with reasons. Again, here's one you might use for the refutation, agreeing with the difference and agreeing, disagreeing. So this, these you can again, use in your refutations, but I would definitely take a look at these as you write. They're, they're really helpful, especially when you get stuck. If you have any questions about what you need to do this week, please feel free to contact me. Thanks.